Jersey, and I have my good friend Monique Lutis. Give her some love. Yeah. Who's going to co-host tonight? We get ready for God to do phenomenal things. And I just want to pray, Father. We thank you for those that are watching tonight. We thank you for this show, Father God. And we pray that someone watches tonight and is just blessed and encouraged and strengthened from the ministry that's before you this night, Father God. We thank you for breakthrough and change, and we just say, "Have your way in Jesus' name." Amen. Come on, let's give God some love, y'all. Amen. How you doing? What's going I'm on? Good. I'm good. It's a busy day. Yeah. God is good. What you do today? I have four events. Oh, wow. Four events so, well, two this morning. And so tell me what you did. This morning I was honored by the city of Patterson. Look, well, that's, that's good. Let's give God praise. That's good. Awesome. So that was nice. That was, it, was early. it was early, but it was good. Okay, event number two? A birthday party at 1 o'clock. Okay, you had the MC? No, I had to perform. Oh, had to perform. Okay. Yeah. But it was so out of control. Kids? No, you know what? Um, I hate to just jump into yeah, this. I learned jump. a lesson. We're we going to jump in. I learned a lesson today. But I don't care how long you've been in business, how long you've been in ministry, how long you've been um, a comedian, in. a singer. Right. Um, I, you learn something every time you are active. Yes. So someone booked me for a birthday party. This is all a learning. I've been doing this nine years, but everything is still a learning process. Mm -hmm. She booked me. She sent me a deposit. And she said, you know, I said, well, when am I going to, I, I like to know exactly when I'm going to perform. So I won't kind of like sit around and, you know, go look. So she said, um, you're going to perform during the cocktail hour. I said, okay, thank you, nothing of it, no big deal. And it's a birthday party. I didn't realize that cocktail hour, people walking in and out looking for their seats. You know, there's no order. Right. You know, there's no structure. Right. And I have ADD really bad. <laughs> yeah, really bad. So even like if I'm on stage and I'm performing, I need there to be some type of order. Right. Because if there's not, and it is funny, my, my pastor used to always say, he won't be able to come out and preach until the choir settles the crowd. You know, and I never understood that. I, you know, I'm like, well, what's the big deal? Just go out and preach. Um, when you have a gift, just go out and do it. Right. But there needs to be order. Because if you, you know, even though you have a gift to preach, to do comedy, to sing, you still have your, your weaknesses. Right. And I have ADHD, and I know that. I know right. who I am. Right. So if I come in here and I need to perform, and everybody's just walking around, yeah. you know, music playing, there's people in the back, kids running around, I'm not going to be able to um, ministry my gift. Right. So I learned something today. Yeah. That when I'm doing my bookings, I have to ask, you know, I have to, I can set my own time. I need to go after this. I need to do this. Because I'm the one that you're hiring, so I need to, I need, I can let you know what's best for me. Exactly. So I learned that today, because cocktail hour was not it. They need to book you after cocktail hour. Right. But that I'll, out. Call, I'll call it, though. Like, I'm like, this is crazy. Like, you know, y'all walking around like, I'm not even here. Right. Yeah. Right. And, you know, and it can be discouraging to a new comedian. Oh, yeah. yeah. It can be discouraging. Yeah. So, you you know, I'm so glad that I've matured. Like, you have to know when you have grown in something. And I believe it's the same in, in ministry and in, when you're preaching or whatever you do, because... Even for me, I don't like do what you got to do and sit in all that walking. It distracts you. It really does. It's a big distraction. So whatever we do, um, it can become distracted. So at least you, you, you learn something. We always learn something new. Right. Yes. So. And everyone doesn't need a comedian at your event. Right. As much as I want to get that money, <laughs> yeah. everyone does not need certain yeah. things. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, you know, I have to begin to pick and choose my events now. Right. Because yeah. sometimes you can do an overkill. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you want to go where you're going to be effective. That's it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I don't want to just go out and get people money and just, you know, be a clown. I'm not a clown. Exactly. Right. You know? So I'm just learning as I'm growing. Yeah. You know? And I think that's a lesson for all of us. Whatever it is that we do, we all should say, learn, be learning. Learning. As you grow. As you grow. All right. Let's give God a shout of praise. Well, I want to have some hot topics with you. Come on, let's go. And I, um, it's just things that's going on in the world and in the body. And I said, well, I think I want to have some hot topics. Where's that hot topics? One thing I want to say, I want to say with everything that's going on in the news and things that are going around, keep your kids close to you. Yes. Yes. Keep your kids close to you. I'm, I'm, I'm referencing the three-year-old girl that was kidnapped at the birthday party. Her name was Cupcake in Alabama. you got to keep your kids close. If kids yes. are outside, it needs to be an adult outside monitor. 
the, the times are just crazy. Yes. Times are just shifting. And I just want to even, even I wrote down here for like men, women, children, it's the holidays. You got to watch yes. your back. You got to watch when you get in your car. Mm -hmm. You need to get in your car and lock your door immediately. You mm -hmm. know, you just got to, it's just the times we're living in. I, I was watching the news earlier today about this. Um, we probably saw yesterday. This, this guy was on a train. He just pushed this woman yeah. right into the train. So it's like challenging times. You got to be alert. Don't be so much in your phones. That you're not alert on what's going on around you. Say Don't be so much again, in your phone. We walk like this. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Or walk with our, our, our earbuds in. Yes. You, you, that's a just, point. You gotta you gotta keep your kids close. Yes. So that was that was one thing I wanted to talk about. Isn't that good? Yes. yes. The yes. second thing I want to talk about, hot topic, is uh, Pastor as uh, a pastor, uh, John McArthur, who says about Beth Moore. He came against women in ministry. You, uh, mm. you know, before I do that, did you want to say anything about the kid thing? Uh, no, I think you covered it. Basically, keep them close. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But this uh, pastor, he's 80 years old. I Googled it, he's 80 years old. And he told her that she should go home. This is a woman in ministry. Yeah. But when I listened to it, she came back. She didn't attack him. She was like, if you don't, if you don't want to follow me or you don't, you don't believe in me, you know, so be it. We're on the same team in essence. But she handled it. She didn't handle it in the flesh. She really right. handled it in a, in, a, in a nice way. But that goes to show whatever we do for God, whatever we do for the kingdom, comedy, whatever it is that you do, it's always going to be haters. And the sad thing is, this is another preacher that's in Christendom. Right. My grandmother, um, bless her soul, she passed away last year. She wasn't fond of women yeah. pastors yeah. either. And it shocked me. But she was so stuck in her 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 age back right. then just okay. it was she felt like there was a place for for women and, and there was a place for for men and she felt like you know the man is supposed to leave right. the body yeah. and um you know i i disagree but i do think there's order mm -hmm. um I, I believe that you know we all have gifts right and if, if god has called you to lead sister lead yes mm -hmm. period Amen. You know, so this, you know, we live in a time where we need all the leaders to be on point. We need all the leaders to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes. So that God, so if God has called you to do that, we have to support her. We have to support her until, you know, um, I know a sister, a, a, a pastor out of PA, her, her husband passed away. And she was just first lady. She was just first lady. He passed away. He had a big church, passed away. And then she, the Holy Spirit told her to step in to pastor the church right. and she did that so sometimes you just have to answer your calling whatever it is right mm -hmm. amen. amen do you find do you find like do you feel since we're talking about the difference in women and ministry women and men in ministry do you find a difference with men in common absolutely oh my god so what do you what do you sense or what do you feel well a lot of people don't think females are funny a lot of people don't think females are funny. I even watch sometimes when I, I love to go to comedy shows just to watch people's reaction. You know, people, sometimes people are all into the guys and then when a woman come up, it's like, you know, they automatically, she, you better be, if I get this all the time, you better be funny, you better bring it. But they would never say that to the guys. Right. So, you know, and that used to bother me when I first got into comedy, when people would walk up on me and say, you better be funny. I would get like really upset about that. But now, you know, I still, it still bothers me, but I act like that person ain't even there. <laughs> I look right straight past that person, because sometimes you just gotta block, right. you know, just block things. And um, yeah, definitely, even when it comes to like booking and paying us, we're, we're underpaid. You know, some of the things that they get away with, sometimes promoters, we gotta chase the promoter around the room, right. you know, to get our money. You know, I, it, it, even in the church, I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna even get further That's into cool. this. Listen, we, 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 Sky's the limit. You go there. You I, want to go there, you go there. There's a church that booked me uh, to perform. This is earlier in my career, and I wasn't really sure the direction I was going into. So I was doing gospel comedy, but I was kind of like, uh, they, they were calling me, but I was like, oh, uh, you know, still kind of struggling with it. So I went to the church, and um, the pastor said, listen, um, Reverend uh, Elder so-and-so is going to pray for you in the prayer closet. I said... You know, and I wasn't really sure how things go. Right, right, right. So I said, okay. So you know, I said, well, I, I prayed for myself before I got here. Right. So he was like, no, you you come into my house. You know, we need to make sure that you're covered, and we gonna pray for you in the prayer class. Go ahead, go on with. And he pushed me, and you know, and, and the guy grabbed my arm so close, and he and the closet was about this small. <laughs> So I'm in the prayer closet and I'm standing there and I'm like, oh my God. And he like, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Yes, 
I'm like, if you don't get your hands off me, get your hands off me now. And it was, I was very upset about that. And I went out, I did my set. But after that, I said, you know what? I can't allow this to happen. We're not going to no prayer closet. Right. Period. Amen. Period. Amen. And you're not going to prank me out. And not to disrespect your house, but you don't need to personally pull me away from anybody to lay hands on me. Exactly. I'm good. Right, exactly. I've walked in covered. That's right. If you want to pray for everybody, let's pray for everybody. If you need to single me out, then I can need to be there. Right. If you looked at me and said, you know what? She needs a special prayer. <laughs> I didn't need to be there. Yeah. So. That was my experience. So, and I felt like because I was a woman, that that would never happen to a man. Exactly. Amen. That joke would have been like, what? <laughs> <laughs> right. so you could have got some knuckles in his mouth. <laughs> Glory be to God. Glory be to Jesus. <laughs> so back with the hot topic. So I just feel like this 80-year-old pastor, author, if you feel like someone is, uh, you don't agree with them, you just keep it, keep it to yourself. There's too many people hurting, too many people dying, too much stuff going on that you got to attack this woman who's a Christian just like you, the serving God the same way you are. You know, if you don't like it, just don't come against it. And she can't, he, they also came against another guy one time too. So it is a lot of people that are Christian that don't like women yeah. in ministry and women speakers. So I feel like that's between them and God. They're missing out. Yeah, they're missing out. They're missing out because some of us are not Yeah. Mm. I love it. I love it. Y'all know who I love. Who do I love, church? Who do I love? Oh. I'm talking about women in ministry. Oh, right. Oh, you yeah. love Joyce Myers. Oh, oh, Joyce Myers. It took me a while to, to catch on to her. I felt her pain in the early right. years of watching her. I felt like, I felt what she was going through. Right. And it was kind of harsh. But as she explained some of her pain and release, she started talking about that more. Right. Because in the, in the beginning of her ministry, she didn't talk much about that. Right, right, being right. molested and different things. Sure, sure, sure. The struggle she went with her husband. So as she began to talk about that, you can see, you know, different layers released. And I just, I love her as well. Yeah, I love her too. And, and a lot of other uh, phenomenal women in ministry that you just salute because of their journey and the things that they've gone through. Amen. Last so can, I, can I ask you a question? Sure. Okay, so there's a, a woman in ministry, and I need your opinion on it. I don't know if we're doing a, yep. we got to wait. No, 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 no. Okay, so um, there's a, a woman in ministry. Uh, she was called to preach at this church, and the pastor went into her room and saw her undergarments on her bed that was laid out by her assistant. And that. when she found out, he didn't do anything to him, he didn't move me, he didn't touch him. He just, he paid for the room, I guess, and he came in the room just to bring flowers. I'm not really sure, yeah, but that. her undergarments were on the bed. But when she found out that he came into her room and saw her undergarments, she canceled the assignment. Right. So I just want to know, what was your take on that? I thought that was a little extra, personally. I don't think you should have been in the room, though. Because if it's a female's room, you're a man. Why are you going in the room anyway? I mean, you could have the, yeah, front, you could have the front desk bring flowers. Yeah. You could have yeah. one of the women in the ministry bring sure. flowers. You, you, why, why are you in there? So I wouldn't, I just think that's cross. And you don't even know if she was in there or whatever, so. Was that enough to cancel the whole assignment? I guess it was for her. <laughs> <laughs> you got, you, it down. You, so you think she was valid with feeling violated? Yeah, because well, every, you know everybody would everybody does different things. Yeah, you know. So and I don't know what kind of undergarment she has. So. Yeah, I don't either. So <laughs> that's, another, that's another hot topic. Yeah. Yeah, but no, I guess it's it's if she and she's a she's a well known minister, so it's like if she felt violated, and she left. She she left. She, she did. Was like I'm out. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think, I, I, think it's, 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 I think you cross the limits. I think you could cross the limits. And I guess for whatever her limit was, it crossed it. Because for really, why, you know, maybe... Yeah, no, I would me. definitely handle that. Like, why were you in my room? That that would need to be handled. Right. But I don't know if it was a rough, like, I don't know if he was doing that Melissa, like, let me go, let me come in and see what I can find. He didn't know her gar undergarments were laid out. I don't think the man should have went in the room, though. That's just my Yeah, opinion. no, you're right, you're right. Because you can send the people from the hotel, you can send the cleaning people. Yeah. yeah. You can leave someone that said, room. please make sure this is that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I guess if y'all put it that way. Yeah. But you probably would have said you got that cheddar, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. Got that money and kept it moving. I would have probably, you know, been side-eyeing him, but, you know, I don't know. I don't know why he did. Maybe that's what he, I don't know. Maybe his wife was on. I don't know. Yeah. You know, this, the whole story. Yeah, I just I know so he, much stuff going on nowadays. Yeah. Especially, you know, like the word says, don't let your good be evil spoken of. I just don't think it looks good for a, ma a man, single or married, to go into a woman's room right, like that. Right, 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 right. Sure. You know, that's just my opinion. Okay. And the last hot topic, y'all heard about Kanye West has a new album out, Jesus is King, 2019. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and I heard some of the songs on it last night. They were really good. But Kanye is a genius. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's a he's a he was he's gifted. Yeah. I remember I um, saw a video of him speaking, and this video was from years ago, and it it looked like he was talking crazy. It looked like he was talking crazy. Cause sometimes when you when you are um, when when you are really 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 gifted, some people it, it looks crazy to some people. Right. Sure. Cause it's you know? different. Right. Yeah. But some people can't understand the, the speaking of tongues. People can't oh, yeah. understand, you know, the 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 um, behavior. But some it looks crazy. So he was talking, and it was looking kind of weird. But I I know I said to myself, there's something special about him. Right. There's something special about him. I wasn't sure what it was, and a lot of his behavior, you know, was, was questionable. But there's definitely something special about him. Yeah, because even uh, I watched it last night. The, the, uh, his group was on. Uh, I think it was Jimmy Kimmel lesson, so I watched the choir in the group, and they were a really big choir, and they were casual, they were surrounded around them, but when you listen to the words, it was really good. Yeah, Kanye's so, a genius. Yeah, so I just pray that he continues to impact. I just want to get your feedback on it. Yeah, I'm a Kanye fan. Yeah, it was good. It was really good. You just never know who God's going to, we live in a time where you just don't know who God's going to use, who right, going to raise right. up, you know, you can't put your mouth on the body. I'm going to talk right. about it later, you know, you can't be super... Uh, Miss Deacon, brother, super Christian, and sister, super Christian. You just got to, okay, God, whatever you're doing, you want to yeah. be in the flow of what God is doing. And he is a man of great influence. So, mm -hmm. Awesome. Give God a shout of praise. Amen. So I want to talk about one thing I went through in the comedy, because I was, I was doing comedy for a while. And I want to I wanna kind of get your feedback on it. Then I'm going to let you jump in. But uh, I did, me, me and my Matt over here on the front row, I had did, was, uh, I, I had a video to send you, but I'll send it to you. So I was doing comedy for a minute. I did the Mary and Matt Hart. So I dressed up as Mary Hart as an older person, kind of like a Tyler Perry thing, mm -hmm. just, you know, with a strong message. Yes. He was the grandson, and I did it for a while. Uh, Paulette Polo, another great woman of God, she let me have a, uh, I did it my first show there, which was really good. I really enjoyed it. So what happened was, well, as I said, what happened was, <laughs> so what happened was I really got attacked. I got attacked. I guess they felt as a pastor, as a leader, why can't you be the grandpa? Why you got to put the wig on? Why you got to put on that? So you know, and I, you know, I'm not, I'm not judging because everybody has their opinion. Right. But I, I already knew that I was going to get some type of attack. But it was so bad, I just, I just gave it up and threw everything away. Really? <laughs> yeah, because it was, it was hard. It was very hard. And I know, people, I know, even people struggle with it. But I, I, my thing is this, and I'm, 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 I'm leading up to something. I look at like I'm getting ready to release three powerful men. That do Christian comedy that dress up that you probably know. Do you know not Carlton Banks? Yes. Awesome. He does uh, Lee Lee, Sister Brown, Sister Squint, right. Uh, right. And Patrick. Phenomenal. I think right. he does it all. He does it all himself. Yes. You have uh, Ty Habersham. He does Miss Gladys oh, yeah. with the glasses. Really good. And then I think about Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry would not be where he's at today I'm without so Medea. Medea. And you know how Medea came about, right? No. Who's mom? No. He, they were on stage doing a play, and one of the characters um, called out sick or something happened, and he needed to fill in, and he didn't have anyone to fill in, so he jumped in and put on, you know, the Medea, and then it just went, and then he kept on doing it, doing it, doing it, then that, that created Oh, so he was like a fill-in? Yes. For um, for himself or for someone else? If someone else was supposed to play that. I don't know if it was a male or a female, okay. but it wasn't him initially. Get out of here. Yeah. Wow. wow. And it just took off from there. Took off so from I'm there. saying, so, but I, I have a message at the end of this. So I'm saying that uh, even Tyler Perry, his studio, the 330 acre studio mm -hmm. that is paid for, that he is just phenomenal, yeah. that's out there. I was there. You were there. <laughs> do you know? Do you know where? If he would have stopped with Medea, do you know what would have hindered him and you know where he it would be where he wouldn't be today? He wouldn't be where he is. But he and you know, and I can understand, you know, um anything you do, people criticize you. Yeah. I had to learn that. But yeah. Anything you do, yeah. people, you know, there's always someone to feel like you shouldn't be doing this. You're doing too much of this. Why do you have to do this? You know. Even with me being a plus size woman, I have to be conscious of where I'm going into certain and what I dress and people thinking like she's so thick to be moving around and this right. this is the way God created me. I'm not gonna not get in front of you because I'm shaped like this. Right. You know? So that same thing with um you know, comedians who just wanna put on costumes and if if God has called you to the theatrical ministry, right, then you have to just walk in that. Well you said the key word. 
and I have it up here, theatrical ministry. There's different phases of ministry. We are right. so stuck with preaching and teaching yes. and all that. Yes. It, and, and comedy. The Bible says, and, and um, my my uh, name was Mary Hart, and I took it from the scripture that says, a Mary Hart that's good like medicine. Right. And I remember even my first show, I had, there was a guy there, and he told me himself he suffered with I would great... I to see it. Somewhere. Yeah, I, I'll show it to you. So there was a guy there on our first show who had like really suffered with great, great depression. Mm -hmm. And he came to me, he's like, Pastor Mark, he was like, I haven't laughed so long and so I haven't laughed like this in so long. Right, right. And you know, so you know, it was an adjustment. I knew it was going to go into conflict, but it was like really, really a lot. So I just backed it from it. But I look at Tyler Perry and I look at all these men that I just named that are men, Christian men, Christian men of God. Right. That this is what God gave them. And Tyler Perry, he sp it just speaks volumes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad he kept it pushing. Yeah. I'm so glad he kept yeah. it pushing. So, you know, all I can say really is, um, if you really feel like you're called to the theatrical ministry, because mm -hmm. like you said, there's different levels of ministry. Yes, yes. And people have to, we have to like, a lot of churches don't even like comedy, period. No. This is new. Yeah. This is new. So some churches, I, I, people, you know, people in other um, ministry departments book me, and then when the pastor see me, they're like, uh-uh, I need to talk to the head of the such and such committee, because I didn't know there was going to be a female comedian. Like, we don't do that here in this church. Wow. So, While yeah. you were there? Yeah. Going yeah. to perform? You can look at their face. Because yeah. the, the, the other thing about gifts is that you can read people's sure behavior. Can. Like, I, you can look out and you can tell, like, where energies sure. are. Yeah. yeah. You know, so you have to be careful. You have to, yeah. And, and early in my career, I would look out and I would see certain energies and it would discourage me. Yeah. And That's like, the same with ministry. And do you find that you do better when you go to places where nobody knows you? Absolutely. Yeah. And that goes with scripture. The Bible says a prophet's without honor in his own hometown. So if, if I I'm sure if I would take would have taken what I did out of my familiar right. surroundings, yes. it would have blossomed. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I don't I don't hate on it, but I, I just think the lesson is that and the lesson is, and that's gonna be my point for later, whatever God gives you or whatever God has created you to do, don't let no devil in hell, no person on earth, None no at all. nobody stop you from, from that. No. And you, that's a great point that sometimes amongst your own yeah. You know, people don't see the gift. I don't know why we don't see the gift in each other when we see each other every day. You know, we know you from grammar school. We know you from high school. We know you from the church. We know you from the choir. We don't, it's hard for us to see. I always say it takes a gifted person to see a gift in another oh, person. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Everyone is not equipped for your assignment. That's right. right. So we have to be careful when people don't feed into us. Everybody is not assigned to do that. That's right. So, so when you get someone that called, that can see it, you have to pray and say, Lord, is that is that your voice? Right. Are you saying this? And then you trust it. Because everyone is not equipped. Yeah. Everyone didn't come here for you. Exactly. And, and that's good. Give her some love. That's so good. And so um, I moved past it, and I like to talk about it, because I think the overall lesson is, and, and the overall thing is that if God gives you something, if you sense, a, if you sense it in your heart, mm -hmm. your spirit, if it's in your gut, I don't care who says what. Sometimes you won't. Uh, uh, you, you won't have the support of family. But I must say that, that I did have people who 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 embraced it. I had people say, "Okay, you know." At first, it was like, "Okay," but then when they heard the message behind it, right. they were like, "Okay, now I can I can see it now." And that was my thing. I would whatever I did, I would pray about it. I would make sure the message was strong message because my thing was people listen to their grandmothers. People love their grandmother. What made Tyler Perry famous, even though he did other male roles, it wasn't the male roles that made him popular, it was the Medea that made him popular. And the same Christians that went to the plays, that went to the movies, that bought the bootleg DVDs and watched them and laughed, those are the same ones that pushed them. So it, it was really discouraging to me because that was something I was trying to launch and try, striving to do, and then it was like, oh man. I still want to go back to comedy, maybe not that, but I still want to do it, but it just was, it was a learning experience, and, and I want to be transparent because whatever any of us want to do, you're going to have challenges in it. It's going to be a fight. And sometimes you got to get, you know, point blank and say, listen, y'all don't take, y'all don't pay my bills. You don't do anything for me. So if this is what I want to do, I am going to do it, yeah. period. Yeah. So sometimes you got to, you know, get like that, and it's yeah. sad, but there, I mean, even if you don't decide to do comedy, you just right. want to preach, you want to, say if you want to go on a road right. and, and preach, people might have something to say about that, that's a shame. Yeah. He left Broadway, that's a shame. <laughs> he in the hotel, that's a shame. You doing this, people are always, always have something to say. Always got an opinion, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. 
So you sometimes you just gotta just do it. If you feel like this is God telling me to do this, right. I'm gonna do it and worry about the rest later. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's good. Give God a shout of prayer. Yeah. So what's on your heart? Anything that you, anything pressing? That's a very good question. This has probably been the most the life changing week that I've had in a long time. I've really been struggling about um, where God wants to take my career. Right. Really been struggling about um, the next level, what it looks like, the next chapter, what it yeah. looks like. Most of you know that my son will be home next year. I was getting really disappointed that I didn't have anything set up for myself or him. Right. And when I promised myself that, you know, by the time he came home, um, I would have something in place for him. Because I wasn't really sure. You know, people promise you, oh, when the son get home, I got a job for him at DPW, I got a job for him here and there. I want to be able to say, son, do this until you are able to find something on your own. Just so right. we can make a little bit of bread. Sure. And um, things just weren't working out. But, you know, the bookings were there. Mm -hmm. The bookings were there. I'm getting booked. But it was like I felt stuck. Mm. I felt stuck. So you can, you can have the calling and still feel stuck. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you can have people say, well, that's what you wanted. You should, you know, and that's the thing. Sometimes you can't tell everybody about when you feel stuck because they feel like you, you how are you going to say that? You're doing five shows a week. You, you know, you're not um, thankful. You're not grateful. I am. But you could be stuck in any, you could feel stuck in any situation, even a blessed situation. I think the thing for you, and I don't want to cut you off, I think the thing for you, which is good, and I have it too, is that hunger. Mm. There's something more that wants more. And Absolutely. I felt through, even as I turned 55, October 2nd, I was like, God, even with, with my life ministry, I'm like, okay, God, what's the next chapter of my right. life? What, what what do you want me to do in ministry-wise? What What is the next phase? Because I don't just want to keep, you know, being satisfied. And then you feel like, like I, I shared with my people a few weeks ago, I, I felt like a few weeks ago, I was like really, really discouraged. Mm. And like really, really down. And not so much that, not so much because of things in life, but just just wanting to see more. Right. Being at the age, no, like in me, I feel like worldwide ministry in my stomach. And then sometimes when you go to church, you don't see the worldwide crowd. Yet. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? So it's like what Absolutely. you have in you is bigger than what you see. And yes. I think that's what was just, you know, just like yourself. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm sure you want you believe in God for bigger platforms, but you know, so that that was my thing. Not to cut you off. I want. I just want the same energy that I get here. I want to take out the world. Amen. That's, Amen. that's all I want. I don't. I, you know, it doesn't have to be bigger. Right. You know, I'll take the bigger. Yeah. But you know, you gotta be ready for bigger. Bigger take this bigger problem. Oh, sure. Bigger devil, bigger that. demons. That's right. So I just want the same and that's the thing. If I'm get, I want the same energy I'm getting here. Yes. Cause you know, think about a gift and, and blessings, it transfers. Yes. You're not stuck here in this location. You know, you gotta be here to get this blessing. You gotta be here. People believe that. I don't wanna believe that. Right. The same God that blesses me here will bless me in California oh, yeah. like us. Because you're blessed. Amen. Yeah, because you're blessed. And the blessing follows you. But sometimes we think that, you know, we got to be here. We leave here. We're not going to get our blessing. No, not at all. So this week I've been, um, last week, I, and you know, God speaks to me. He speaks to me in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to really ask yourself, what, when, do you, when do you talk to me? And you have to listen. You have to watch. Because sometimes he talks to us at different times. And he seems to wake me up in my sleep. So he woke me up about a week ago and he said, open up your comedy show, your comedy club. And I'm like, comedy? Why would I want to do that? Then I'm not going to be able to go on the road. And God said, go look at us some places. I already got the people in, in position. And that's that. He even gave me a location. And I was like, oh my God, for real, God? Like, I'm the type of person, I'm like, for real? <laughs> so I called the person that God wanted me to call. And the person said, yeah, come on down tomorrow. Hallelujah. I walked in the building, and God said, yeah, this is it. The time is now. And I was like, oh, my God, are you sure? Like, I always question God. That's not good, but I do. I'm I, always, say, I say it's good, because he's the only one to give you the right answer. So I don't have to. <laughs> people say, oh, don't question God. He the one to give you the right You question in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he'll direct your path. Amen. Ask him. Amen. Ask him to show you give and seek and you shall find. Ask God. Right. I'm like, ask you, you sure? Because <laughs> the guy wasn't really seeing my vision. I would tell him different things about me. And he was like, no, well, maybe you should do a couple of comedy shows and see how it go. And then I'm like, no, 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 no. I've been doing this a long time. Right. I had my own business in 2004, uh, fashion shows, and I was doing before comedy. Mm -hmm. You know, and I've been at my job 24 years in finance. Right. Next year is 25 years, and I could be, t you know, that's a whole, I don't want to put that on tape. That's a whole, <laughs> that's a whole that's other after, class. That's after the show. That's a whole other class. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you got to count your ducks and get it in line. Right. So... Um, he never, he, he said, all right, I sent you a proposal. 
He didn't say it. Some said, you know what? Go to this other spot. I walked into this other spot and God said, this is it. Everything about it. Because as a woman, I needed something to protect me. I didn't want a storefront comedy exactly. club. Right. I needed something that was like in something like, you know, you would have to get, go through one door to get through another door to get to me. Exactly. So I wanted that protection. There's some things that I wanted. This place has all of the amenities that I want. And he gave me a price. I'm like, Lord, oh God, I can't afford this by myself. So I told the guy, I said, listen, I will revisit this on Monday, which is tomorrow. So I'm I'm excited though. Even if this doesn't, this deal doesn't play it out, I'm excited because you have to have goals. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Goals keep you goals does something to your discouragement. Yeah, and you gotta look, you gotta see. Right. You just can't pray, you gotta look, you gotta and You gotta be active. Yeah, and you gotta find where your favor is. I teach my leaders that. I said, go find where your favor is. Right. You know what I'm saying? You never you don't know. You right? never know. You meet someone and then say, you know what? It usually goes for this, but I'm gonna give you this. You never know where your favor is. So I said to him, I said, I would like you to go down to this. And he said, that's that's crazy, that's impossible, that's, that, that ain't gonna happen. I said, all right, well, I'll talk to you, you know, Monday. Um, so, and I want, because the God that I serve yes. will make him be obedient. Amen. It is meant for me to have. Oh, sure. Amen. That's so, true. so. And even if he does it, even if he does it for X amount of time to give you time to right. build up. So, let me right. tell you, we release favor with God and favor with man. Amen. Yeah, the heart yes. of the king is in the hand of the Lord and he turns us so. You, ne- you, you get never- to come yes. and, and before You can to. even host on my show. I would love to. I would love I'm to. on the road. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to come. Amen. Because yeah. it's going to it's gonna change the direction of my career. I'm not going to be able to do the four shows in a day like I'm, I'm doing now. And that may be a good thing because sometimes right. pushing yourself is exhausting. Yeah. Like I have to go home and take a nap today prepare myself for now. Yeah. And then tomorrow my mother just had surgery so I have to go visit her tomorrow. So it's just like I'm going non-stop. Yeah. And I don't have anything to show for it. Yeah. So that's good. He's shifting you. That's a good thing. I'm excited. And Thank you, Jesus. In advance. Yeah. And then, In advance. And you know what happens too? A lot of times where we get discouraged is like our silent years, the, the, the formative years of building in. Because I know I, I really got discouraged during that time. But you, you have to just, you just got to keep pressing in. Because Tyler Perry didn't get to where he's at overnight. No, Look right. at where he's at. It's, it's, Absolutely. it's steps, it's stages. And don't be afraid to ask for help. Amen. Right. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, to see that it's, it's the right direction to go in to ask for um, silent investors. Right. Um, because a lot of times my pride get in the way. You know, you want to do things yourself. You want to do things yourself. Right. So I believe so much that God has called me to comedy, not only as a comedian, but to give other people a platform. Right. To bring people together. That's good. You know, so I, I want to be not only just a performer, I want to be someone that brings you into the business and guides you. So, you know, I, I pray that, you know, someone believes in my vision as well and, you know, wants oh, to be a silent yeah. investor. And I think you just got, I think, whether it's ministry, whether it's church, I remember years ago, even when I started years ago, and it was just like, you know, you just go through, you just go through. But I just think when you're faithful and you keep at it and you keep at it and you keep at it and God will send people to you to help you and bless you. I, I'm going to quote something that you have on your page. I liked it and I wrote it down. It says, uh, people I have met in this comedy journey have helped me more than people I've known my entire life. Yes. Stop begging for support. Start networking with strangers. Yeah. They're the biggest supporters you've got. And then I was thinking, when you said that, I want you to elaborate on that. But when you said that, I was thinking about what the word says. It says, uh, be careful how you entertain strangers because you can entertain angels unaware. So I just want you to jump on that because it was on your page and I know you you said I'm gonna well, see what, what you are you are proof our relationship is proof that um you can meet someone and they bless your life totally. You know, we didn't know each other before. You know, and it was something that just drew, you know, just caught my attention. And and I do a lot of shows. Right. And everybody don't get my attention. <laughs> okay, let's let me put that out there. Put that out. But um there was something about you and you know, just just you as a pastor, as a speaker, you know, as a prayer warrior, just, you know, just how you live your life as an example. Right. Um, and, and not that, you know, you're perfect. No. And that's what I love. Yeah. Don't come to me, you well, know, all perfect and, 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 you know, like you ain't been through nothing. I don't, you know, I, don't, I, I can't sit it up under you. You ain't been nowhere. Mm. Right. So that's what I love about you. So 
our relationship is proof that you know God will bring people into your life to pray for you, to nurture you, to to guide you. And even if you're not with that person every day, or and that's another thing as a woman too. Um, sometimes women we we feel like you know we have to be. I'm gonna put this out there. Put it out there. So brace yourselves. Come on, give it sometimes we feel like we have to be intimate with people mm. to be connected. Mm. We think that the attraction. Oh, he said hello. I mean, he like. You know, we have to learn that we we have sometimes people come into our life to bless us. Right. Everybody don't come into our life to sleep with us. That's right. That's good. And women, it is important for us to, to know that. Because sometimes we get it twisted. Men and women can be friends. That's right. Men and women can help each other. They can build each other up. Yes. Every man that speaks to us doesn't mean that we have to go to bed with them. That's right. That's an important That's lesson right. that I had to learn. Oh, he like my dick. And you, you know, you mess up a good relationship because right. you're worried about that man like you. So good. I'm just wanted to appreciate everyone that God sends in my life. That's right. And yes, I appreciate yes. you. Oh, thank you so much. Let's give us some love. <laughs> you know, I just talk about, you said, like, you know, start, net, step, start networking with strangers. But you just never know who your divine connection is hooked up to. And I find, even with Ernest, who just left, you know, us being in this hotel years ago, just a divine connection. Mm. You know, so he'll put you with people and connect you with people to bless your life, to encourage your life. Many of my leadership, you know, just the divine connection. The people that are, you know, that come to this church, just divine connection. So God is the God of divine connection. And that's what we want. Time is too short to be playing games. Yeah. So you, you, that's our prayer. Whatever you, you want, the divine connections of God. So I like what you said about that. Amen. All right. Anything else you want to bring out? Um, I Just to elaborate that a little bit more. Um. You know, part of that was we think that people have been in our lives a long time. When I got into comedy, my mother didn't think I was funny. Mm. And she made it public, she made it known. And she was like, well, why are you getting into comedy? I don't think you're funny. But she was going over what she knew about me. We didn't have a great relationship, but it's getting so much better now. That's God, good. God, to God be the glory. That's good. People need to hear that. Let's give God praise. Yes. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, I don't ever want to serve people and not take care of my own life. And, you know, sometimes, you know, some people say, well, you got to fix yourself before you fix others and fix other people. You know, just work on me, Lord. In whatever order you want to do it, just right. work on me. Right. But I need it to be balanced. I don't want to come out here making you laugh and preach and, and talking a good word and then go home fighting with my mother and, and go with my parents. and No matter what they did, because none of us are perfect. Right. None of us are perfect. We need forgiveness. Yes. And it starts with forgiving ourselves. That's right. And I learned that when my son went to prison, I had to forgive myself. So who am I to, to you know, not ask him for forgiveness when I'm not even forgiving my mother? My mother was 16 when she had me. 15 when she got pregnant. A child. Yeah. A child. Mine was too. I was adopted, so I found out, as a, and I still don't know who my um, natural parents are, but I found out at a young age, and I think, you know, at the time my dad was 15, and my mom was 16, or vice versa, so... I found that they, they were they were young, but I, I thank God for that because uh, they could have boarded me, right. you know. So I'm grateful, you know, that they were young. So yeah. I, I get it. Yeah, I get it. So we have to forgive people because you never know when you're going to be in a situation where you need forgiveness. That's right. Amen. So, Amen. Yeah, that's good. That's One problem. thing I heard too this week that was okay. You clap. One thing I heard this week that was so good. It says, and that's one thing I want to focus on more. So even as we do continue to do more talk shows and more master classes. Transparency brings transformation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That when you're transparent with people, that people's lives can be changed, people's lives can be helped. Sometimes God will lead you to be transparent one on one mm -hmm. or in a small group. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, if you're transparent in a large setting, you have to make sure that you're ready <laughs> for all that. Because once you put it out there, it's out there. Yeah. So you have to make sure you're ready yeah. to be transparent. Because so, once it's out there, you can't take it's it out, back. Yeah. Absolutely. But transparency brings transformation. I believe even leaders or people in church that share their life, mm -hmm. share their, their mishaps, share their downfalls, I believe that makes them more successful than someone that's come up here and pull out scripture. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You let people know you hurt, you, you, you miss it, you get lonely, you get depressed, you have blah days. Relate. As me and Matt said, we have poop days sometimes, you know, and you're still saved and love God. You know, right. you, you know it, you, you're putting yourself out there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a single female comedian on the road, and it's very lonely. Sometimes I have to say, sometimes I have to walk around my house and say, Lord, just fill this place, Lord. Yes. Fill this place, Lord. Fill this place. 
because it feels alone, it feels empty. Right. And that's not a good feeling. Amen. So sometimes I have to walk around and say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, send me your angels. Yes. Send me your angels. Because Satan is, let me tell you, Satan is a lurker. Oh, you he is a lurker. Yeah. And he knows when to attack. Mm -hmm. So you sometimes you just have to call him out there. Uh -uh, not tonight, Satan. I'm getting me some sleep. Right. You're not going to keep me up all night worried about nobody else in the bed with me. That's right. The devil's alive. And, and they go through it too. I, I, mean, I, go, I mean, you go through it too. Especially when you come out of church, you have a good time in church, and then you're like, you social with everybody. Then you're it's like, rough. Oh, I'm back to myself. Everybody it's, went on. It's, it's, <laughs> everybody went back to their wife, to their husband, to their boo boo. Yes. You know, you still, you, you trying to be saved, you trying to live right. Now, it ain't that we can't be with nobody. Right. Oh, yeah. Say it. Come on here. Ain't right. like we, you know, I ain't, I ain't looking too bad. Right. You know, but you just, you know, you want to be a person of integrity. Right. You try. Strive to be, pray to be, pray on. Yeah, that's true. That's a, it, sometimes that can be a very lonely time, like after when everything dust settles and you go home and you, you don't preach and, you know, have fellowship and everybody going on with them, wives and husbands. Mm -hmm. And that can be a bad day. That's, mm. you know, that's a whole other class we should have. Right. <laughs> yeah. All right. So what we're going to do now, I think we're going to shift now. Pastor Bear, would you stand? We're going to have like a sound off. So from what we've discussed, we're going to open up uh, now if anybody wants to sound off or make a comment over anything that was discussed. Something that, I'm going to maybe something that spoke, I'm going to put it all, I'm going to combine it together. Uh, if you want to uh, sound off, uh, comment on what has been said, or you want to ask myself or Monique a question, or you want to speak to something that really blessed you or spoke to you or blessed your night, we're going to open it up at this time, and we're here for you. We ain't going to drag it out either. So if you, if you desire to ask something or say something, come over to the sign and pass the bed that's holding the mic and we're here for you. Come on, don't be shy. Ask me something. Challenge my brain. Yes. Come on. Challenge my brain. Challenge us. One question. Somebody ask Something that spoke to you. Something that blessed you. Nobody? Well, I have a question. Yes. Okay, come on. Come on up, Kiki. Go ahead. You can go for it. Yes. Please stand in line to the left. Yeah. You're not on camera. <laughs> Please, just be. I just wanted to comment. Uh, I'm what Pastor Market said because I was there when you did uh, the first comedy. Is that mic on? Well, hold on. Make sure the mic's on. Hold on. We want to be able to. Testing. Okay. I just wanted to oh, comment. Good, I, hear I just wanted to comment because I was at Pastor Mark's um, at Mandela Power when he did the, um, the show, that first show, and it was absolutely amazing. I wasn't even aware that we had stuff. I, I just thought you were doing it elsewhere, right? Which is kind of saddened my heart because it really was excellent, and right. to be that discouraged. So I want to encourage you that yes. I think take it. I would say. Take my mic. Take my mic. Yeah, morning, Michelle. Okay. It's only it's only my opinion, but I would say take it where others don't know you because it was magnificent. Wow. It really was, Thank you. and uh, you know I feel like we're cheating those, and not giving them an opportunity, and we laughed so hard. And like it says, you know, laughter is medicine. So, and it may, and you may feel the season's over, but um, you were so blessed, and wow. I would like to, I would like to see you continue it. Thank Amen. you. Amen. That's the key. What she said when, 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 when people are blessed by what you're doing, that means continue. Right. Amen. When people are blessed by what you're doing, if someone says you blessed me, even if it's one person, right. that means that you are in the right place. Yeah. So thank you for that. I wanted to talk about what you were talking about, about um, having a relationship with a, a male and it not being physical. And how I could relate, because you know, I had somebody just like how you met Mark, and you know, God put people in your life for a reason. And I had someone that was I was friends with for well over 20 years, and Mark knows about it. And we were, he was like a brother to, you know, like a brother. And people automatically from the outside looking in thought it was just, we were in a relationship, right. and we never were. So you don't, like what you were saying, you don't have to be in a relationship with somebody right. to 
have a connection right. and have a bond and to be able to have somebody to confide in. Because yeah. you can't confide in anybody. That's right. You know, That's but I, you know, I can stand here and say, you know, Mark, you know, I've known Mark and I know, you know, I call him the heart warrior. You know, for about 17 years and like what you were saying about, you know, sometimes strength, my whole family hadn't been there for me when Mark took a day off of work at four o'clock in the morning. I will never forget that. Mm -hmm. To come with me in surgery when half of my family wasn't even there. Yeah. You understand? I mean, yeah. my blood family. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he stayed there mm -hmm. until I came out. Wow. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I think friendships um, sometimes go beyond friendships. Yeah. And people, it's yeah. okay if people don't understand that on the outside. Right. It's what's between you know, you and the other person, regardless of the male, and I'm a single mother, mm -hmm. and I've learned, like how you talked about the loneliness, mm -hmm. and I'm at the stage of my life because I'm 46 years old. We the same age, We look good. Oh, yeah. okay. We the same age. We look good. And, um, the loneliness, it, I can't, I can say as a woman, you know, sometimes it do, you know, whisper in my ear or this and that, but I grab a hold to the fact that <laughs> From where I've been, I know my work. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So every time somebody come crawling and say, oh, hey, girl, this is not, I'll be like, uh -huh. Right. You know, your credentials is not right. right. You know, keep it going. Amen. Yes. Well, that's right. Well, that's growth, sis. That's, that's growth. Amen. 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 All right, let's keep it going. Come on up. <laughs> Um, I like what I was saying about divine connections. Um, I think I've been here. Oh. <laughs> um, I think I've been coming here like um, three years maybe, but I've known Pat, I know Pat for um, for quite a while. But um, divine connections is just so important, and just to recognize um, where God has put you. And um, that's another come here. I mean, like this has been like my new family, and I just always like thank God for my family, like because there's been certain situations where y'all have come through whether praying or other ways and you know my other family like you might tell somebody about something and they'd be like oh okay but this place has they they pray and do like pastor mark says pray and do um then i think about um with the divine connections also i think about um the story of joseph how god really you know he didn't miss what he what god had for him you know god, and i just love that how um, sometimes we might think we might beat ourselves up like thinking that we made a, a mistake or thinking that you know, God, you know, I might have missed that situation, or that's not, you know, I messed up, God, but God has a, a plan for us, and we can't run from it. You know? Amen. That's the point. Thank you. Well, I'm going to ask a question for you. Um, this is in regards to uh, your son. You mentioned that your son is coming home, like, next year. Yes. Um, I want to ask you, uh, do you feel the need or because you talked about preparation right. and getting things to prepare. Yes. Um, as far as you, for that transition, you know, for yourself, whether yes. it be like counseling, how do I prepare, yeah. you know, for I got my sons coming home. Yeah. What do you think I'm about glad that? you mentioned that. Thank you. Because, um, you know, there's been kind of the focus on, he's coming home, yay, yay, yay. But there's, it, it, I'm going to need help to prepare for him. Because he was 18 when he left, he's now going to be 24 or 25 when he gets home. And I've been on my, by myself a long time, so I'm used to doing things by myself and doing, you know, and not worrying about anything. So that's gonna be a big mental adjustment. <laughs> so I'm glad you, you said that, because sometimes we forget about ourselves. Right. You know, we just worry about like, I gotta get this money for him, I gotta do this, I got But you made a great point today, and what that made me aware that I have to prepare myself mentally and physically for him to come home because um, I don't know what it's going to be like when he gets home. He calls me every day that he speaks positive, but I don't know. That could be a jail thing, to be honest with you. Yeah. We, you know, a lot of them, inmates are smart, and they do what they need to They say what they need to say to get by. So not that I don't believe my son, but you just never know where something is coming from. Um, so I have to, when, I, when, you know, I have to, when he comes home, I need to be able to handle some of the stuff that's going to be happening. So thank you for bringing that to my attention. Amen. And two, we we're, we as a ministry in this church, we definitely um, I want you to see Pastor Faith and Beverly and give them his name. 
to start preparing through prayer, praying for him, covering him in prayer now, because let me tell you something, the return rate for people once they come out is very high, and we don't want, once he comes out, no turning back, no going back, so we want to pray now, we want to back Monique and support her now, uh, whatever we can do for her, we want to prepare and be a part of that, because that's all a part of ministry, ministry does not come to church, hear the choir sing, get in prayer, going on ministry, it's getting behind the single mother and saying, okay, we got your back as a ministry, what can we do, what do you need, what can we do to prepare her, but, you know, starting starting with the foundation of prayer first, and covering her, covering her son, so when he comes out, he can get on his feet, and he does not have to go back, because there is a thing as a jail talk, jail salvation, people are saved, and love God, and can serve God while they're away, because they don't have the things that's pulling on them, the drugs are not in jail, per se, so to speak, so when you come out, and you have access, everybody say access, it's a whole different, it's a whole different ball game. But we want to cover him in prayer and saturate him in prayer now and then also be backing for Monique too as well. So amen. So we, we got your back. We're going to support you in Jesus' name. That's a great, that was a great question. Are you holding it? Monique, um, I'm so glad you brought that subject up about your son. My son was in jail when he came home. He knew God, but I lost, we were planning this wedding <laughs> and he, he knew God, I had to bury him a day before his 25th birthday. So whatever you do, what I have to give God thanks for this. Yes. When the new year came in, we were on the phone together. He said, Ma, I found the Lord. And so we brought, we brought the new year in together. I hold on to that. Yes. Um, he, we were shopping, and he wanted these raw blue pants and these red sneakers. And I said, no, son, when we go shopping again, we get him. When I lost him, I went to one of my Bibles. He had a wool blue pants oh. and red sneakers. Wow. So you know what I'm saying to you? Yes. Whatever you do, when he come home, give him love. Oh, yes. thank you. And speak to him about God. Mm -hmm. Let him know that it's going to take God yes. to keep him straight. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Anything else, something that blessed you tonight, something that spoke to you, something that gave you hope? We're not going to drag it out. <laughs> I, I just want to, I want to get to the mic. I just want to know, need to elaborate on how she was talking about the forgiveness. Mm. I, 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 I just want you to speak on that for That's a minute. Good. About your mom. Yeah. Uh, and yourself. Yeah. Uh -huh. And what do you feel about, you know, how would people get past it's hard. The forgiveness. It's hard because a lot of things transpired, you know. Um, but what I try to do, my grandmother, God, God bless her soul, she had me always focus on the positive. Mm -hmm. You know, I, my mother was a hardworking woman. I got that from her. She was, a, um, she asked for anything that she wanted. I'm learning that now from her. Mm -hmm. So I'm learning to focus on the things, the positive things. Okay. You know, I'm going to say this. I'm gonna put this out there, and I don't mean to be disrespectful to anyone. I was never molested, and that alone is a blessing. Because most of the people my age and older have been. Yes, that's good. You know, and sometimes that's a generational curse that happens in families. I have four uncles, and my mother was the only girl, and I thank God that no one has ever touched me. And so I'm just learning now to just give God thanks for the things that didn't happen to me. I was raised with my father, but that might have been a blessing as well. Sometimes not being raised, and I, and I love him, and don't disrespect to him, but sometimes everyone is not equipped to give you what you need. Amen, amen. So maybe our, our love for each other was in a, another chapter. It wasn't in the beginning chapter. We think that everybody's supposed to love us through the whole, the whole book. And, and sometimes there's, no, there's nothing in the book that's just from beginning to end the same. Things change. So I'm thankful for the love that my mother has shown me um, now because she's accepted Christ into her life and she, she loves God. And when you love God, it allows you to love other people. Amen. 
So I'm grateful. So I'm learning forgiveness. But you know why? Most importantly, I want forgiveness. I want forgiveness. I wasn't a great parent. I suffered from depression. There's a lot of things that I did. I didn't raise my youngest child because I was depressed. And that's a whole other topic, but I didn't raise her because I was depressed. And um, God gave me a second chance. So how could God give me a second chance and not give my mother a second chance? Who am I? So on that strength alone, I am forgiving her because I want God to forgive me. Simple. Simple. Thank you for that question. I just have one question. Um, how do you come up with your material? You got all this resources with the internet and all that stuff. That's all I wanted to ask. Oh, that's a good question. Y'all got some good questions tonight. <laughs> you know, I'm a different kind of uh, comedian. I speak on my life. You know, I take some of the things that were painful to me. Some of my biggest jokes um, are things that um, were painful. I have a joke that I do about Tracy Morgan. Someone said I look like Tracy Morgan. That's like a big joke. That's a big joke. Um, I remember being in the church as a little girl, you know, my grandmother would have mitts and stuff and then she would hold on to her mitts and she wouldn't give me one. She'd be like, come on now, stop asking for me. So I have a, my candy lady joke that I do that, that's a big one. So certain things that happen in my life, I just try to turn it around into a story, share my story. And um, when my son went to prison, I said, you know, Lord, I, I need, now I'm going to need some new jokes when he come out next year. <laughs> So, you know, and every day I ask the Lord, pour your creativity in because yeah. writing is not my first, it's not a strong point. My ADD will allow me to sit and write. I'm going to put that out there. Right. So, and that's very difficult for me. Right. I didn't really start writing until maybe about a year or two ago. And I have to force myself to do it. So, it takes time. It takes time. Yeah. So, that's where I get my material from, my, my everyday life. Yeah. That's good. Um, me too. Even the things that I come up with, it's, if, if you, and I think, it, like you said, it's a part of that creativity. If you think about the things you've gone through, or you think about funny things, or things that may be happening, it, it can become a joke. Yes. <laughs> it's like, yes. it really can't. It's just like seizing the moment, and then I may write it down and then revisit. Like I did it with the um, the joke with the night nice shower caps, with the ladies going out in the shower yeah. caps. <laughs> because I see so many women, when they go out, I'm like, would they please take them shower caps off? I'm like, that's such a good joke, especially when you bring it before people's <laughs> eyes. So a lot of times, if that's your thing, you will, you will, uh, okay. you can take that and you can work it. But I want to ask you a question in regards to comedy. Now, do you, like, I don't think I will be funny outside of a Christian audience. So how do you do? How do you deal with your audience? How do you do? Really yeah, how do you, Because I, I don't. I, my stuff is more so like Christian and clean. So well, how do you? That's a good question. Yeah, thank you. I got when I first got to comedy, I was doing secular, strictly secular. I got on stage and I went bop 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 bop, and I noticed it was getting a certain type of attention. Like the guys that come after the church would be like, "Yeah, what was that you were saying?" You know, I said after the church. Did I say that? Yeah. After the set. And say, what were, you know, what was that you were saying at the club? You were, you was in the club and stuff before you did right. Okay. And I didn't like the attention that it was bringing me. Okay. So I was like, so a guy came to me one day. He said, you know, people, when you come on stage, people are listening to what you say. You can say anything. You don't have to say, bop, 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 because I used to give it to him. Right. So I said, okay. So he said, why don't you try some clean comedy? So. I did one show, another show, and the pastors just started calling me. Wow. And it was even before I was even ready, they would just call me and call me and call me. And, um, you know, I got questioned, you know, by some of the comedians, you secular, you gospel, what you doing? I feel like this, you know, e even as, as a pastor, you don't have to be in a church to minister to people. Not at all. Not at all. So sometimes there's somebody in a club that needs to hear my joke. And then sometimes when you in church, there's sometimes you, you need stuff to remind you where you came from. Right. So I think that, you know, I make myself in more of a demand doing both. Right. That's good, though. You know? But I just was thinking, now for me, I might have to, if I do it more, I Well, Derek does to both. Yeah. Derek Watson, he can do both. Yeah. So you learn at... Well, what was it? What did he start it? Gospel. Okay. But the true gift will allow you to adjust. Right. You adjust. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think you can do it. Okay. I think you can do it secular. Okay. Yeah, when I open up my club, I'm happy to come out. <laughs> yeah, but I was just thinking because I was thinking like, you know, you want to be, you want to be reasonable. So I said, I don't think, I didn't think that I could. No, because I mean, from what I've heard, your jokes are not 
Um, like I feel like you there everyone can relate to them. Yeah, okay, yeah. So it's so like, it could be clean and oh, not absolutely. true. Yeah, clean and not true. Because everyone that's in the secular uh, realm doesn't want to hit and map this and yeah, map yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I got Some people just don't like all of that. Right. Yeah. So, you know, they want to come out have a good time here, clean comedy. Yes. You know, so you can do it. Okay. Thank you. Right. Hello there. Um <laughs> Yeah, so um question about comedy. So I've been doing comedy professionally for about 10 years now, in my head, and I'm really good at it. So, um, where in this part of Jersey, or even the city though, but specifically Jersey, because there's not too many places that I know of, that I can get a good start? Google it. Google it. Google, Google open mics. Mm -hmm. That's how I did There's clubs that have um, uh, new comic nights. Like Broadway Comedy Club has, has um, new comic night. Um, Caroline's has Monday nights as new comedy nights. So if you Google it, you call a club, hey, I'm a little comedian, and go to comedy shows. When, yeah, if yeah. we're friends, if you see me posting a flyer, whether it's a gospel show or a cyclist show, go. Yeah, you know, good. show your face. Because people are going to say, what the guy, he come here, you want to go up? People are very open in the comedy business. Oh, that's good to hear. So, you know, you just have to get yourself to go out there. It's a hustle, it's a grind. You have to, you know, it's a grind. Um, I remember when I first started, I was out every night. But I had to, I had to introduce myself to people. And I was working a part-time job and a full-time job, and I, I had to, you know, sacrifice. So now, you know, with this club, it'll allow me to ease up a little bit, um, but in a bigger way. So this is a process, but just Google open mics, show up, um, introduce yourself to other comics. You know, they're friendly. They're friendly, we don't bite. You know, if you see me posting something, you're welcome to come. Say, hey, I'm gonna roll with you. Meet me here, it doesn't matter. You know, if it's for you, it'll come to you too. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I think what um, kind of like zeroed in on me was um, how Jesus said, uh, a prophet doesn't have any honor in their own country. Yeah. That was coming to me this week and um, how other people may not see the gifts that's right. inside of you um, when they're used to you because they're used to seeing you in a certain particular way. That's so, true. so Pastor Mark, I encourage you, if you need to do this, then do it. Right. Amen. 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 Anybody else? I'll take the mic, I know it's moving. All right. Well, we're going to close our show. Give God a praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, we thank Monique for coming. Give us some love. Thank you for having me. It was a great time. Thanks for the questions. Appreciate it. Some of the questions were very mind stimulating. So thank you. Amen. Give us some love, but she got to go. Yeah. And before she goes, is there anything anybody else wants to say to her? Well, since we're off mic, the speaker will talk now to them to come through the mic. Anything you want to say to her before she leaves?